people to hear a message that is relevant and timely and applicable to each life. Bless us now, for we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. I beg you with a story from an Iranian woman. Her name is given as uh, Samira Alanijad, whose son was brutally murdered. Now, in their judiciary system, much laid on the family of the, the murderer, murdered in terms of sentencing. And Samira, in speaking to the Associated Press, said that her heart was taken up with vengeance. The thought of retribution pervaded her mind because here is this person who has taken away her boy. But then, as the time for the execution drew near, something happened in her heart. And she made up her mind and decided to forgive the guilty. And oh, how they celebrated her as a hero. We applaud human unselfishness from the Nazi war criminal and the, the Jewish victim to the, the, the challenge between the Hutus and Tutsis of Rwanda. We have heard story after story of unselfishness, but my brothers, my sisters, my friends, none can compare to that which happened at Calvary. The Roman soldiers had perfected the art of crucifixion. They knew how it was to be done. It involved uh, nailing the victim to the cross. It involved uh, 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 jamming the cross into the prepared hole. And after which, wedges would be used to make sure that the cross would stand firm. And then they would spend their time gambling away until the death of the victim. And so it was, Jesus found himself on a cruel cross. And as, he, and, and as the Roman soldiers gambled, and as, and as the, the crowd, uh, bloodthirsty, uh, uh, ready, watching to see, seeing the, uh, his life ebbing away, all of heaven stood in amazement that, that this one in whom resides all power would allow himself to be crucified. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, I want us to understand that, that, that heaven stood watching my Jesus dying. His, 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 his head uh, bleeding from the crown of thorns. Yes, yes, yes. His, his back bruised and burdened because of the carrying of the cross. And as his life seemed to be ebbing away for a moment, just a moment, he seemed to inhale as about he was about to say something. And all heaven paid attention to hear what would Jesus say. This injustice being perpetrated on him. What is he about to say? I can just imagine Gabriel standing with his hand to his sword, ready to draw because Jesus is about to speak. He must be about to speak out against injustice. The angel at the gate get ready to swing the door wide open so that Gabriel's path can be unimpeded. And if you want to know what one angel can do, then ask Sennacherib, because you ought to know, you ought to know today that as Jesus was there on the cross, the songwriter says he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. The angels stood ready, looking at each other. What is he about to say? They thought this was a time to cry for justice. They thought that this was a call for rescue. But Jesus says, Father, I have a favor to ask of you. It was prayer meeting time on the cross. And you would have thought that Jesus would have prayed for rescue. 
you would have thought that Jesus would have called for a demonstration against injustice. They disturbed his prayer meeting at Gethsemane. They they concocted a kangaroo court. They concocted false witnesses to bear testimonies against him. You would have thought that he would revile them for what they have done. But Jesus says, Father, speak, son, I'm ready. Heaven stands ready to rescue. Heaven stands ready. Gabriel says, just speak the word, Lord. But instead of calling for help, instead of calling in heaven's cavalry he says father forgive them father forgive them because they know not what they do what a word from the father what a word from jesus he called his father because he knew he says father i know that you are watching father i know you hate injustice father i know that these things things like these causes righteous indignation to swell up in you he says father i am not seeking justice father i'm seeking mercy for my persecutors and i want us to know today this first cry it would be appropriate if his first cry would have been for justice we, but we understand, beloved friends, that one of the constituent parts of justification is the pardoning of sins. God is asking, please absolve the sins of those who by their own actions are condemning themselves. He is asking, do not hold to their account. Hold this. Hold, watch this. He's saying, do not put the sin to their account charge the sin against my account so so i am willing to bear the sin that they are per perpetrating against me my lord what a god jesus is saying to pardon means to give up to resentment to no longer blame a person for what he or she has done and i want you to know my friends that jesus in talking to the father was talking to the father because he knows the mind of god micah chapter 7 verse 18 says who is a god like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity that passeth by the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage he retaineth not his anger forever because our God delighteth in mercy thank you Jesus that you are full of mercy and love my friends watch this listen 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 usually the, the way of forgiveness goes like this usually the person who has been wronged would have some time to go through the grief process you, you have had some time to think about it. You, you have had some time to, the, the storm is now over. The pain has now subsided. And you have an opportunity to think back on what you have been through. And so sometimes we think about it. And you said, you know, it's not good for me to continue in this. It, it's not good for me to, 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 to keep he holding myself captive to the resentment that I now feel. You have gone through the grief process. You have gone through the denial. You have gone through the anger. You have gone through the bargaining. You, you, have, you have gone through the entire process. And now you come to the place of your own healing. But Jesus was still feeling the pangs of pain. Yet he said, Father, forgive them. The issue was not yet settled. He, he was still going through the agony and, uh, and the shame that comes about by, by be, dying on a Roman cross. But even amidst the, the agony, the Hebrew says he endured the cross, despising the shame. And I want someone to know today that he did it all for you and for me. He was unceremoniously young from his prayer meeting. He was taken before the kangaroo court. He despised, rejected, dying on the cross with parched lips, bruised back, weakened limbs. Uh, 
that, that, that seemed to have made the cross heavier with every step. His, the blood was still oozing from, from his brow. Yet with outstretched arms of love to redeem mankind from their sins. Yes, he faced the anguish. The Savior felt no hatred but was willing to forgive the sins of those who were against him. There was no resentment, no anger, no bitterness, no feeling of hostility, nor damaged pride, but it encapsulates the depth of God's forgiveness for his erring people. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, I had to ask the question, he says, Father, because he knows that his mind and the mind of the Father are one. It's about redemption. But he says, forgive, pardon, remove, erase the, the guilt, remove from them the penalty of their own action and put it on me. He says, forgive them. And the question must be asked, who are the objects of his forgiveness? I submit to you that Jesus was saying, I want the Romans who hammered the nails, I want them forgiven. Jesus is saying, I want Caiaphas, the high priest, the same one who in a corrupt manner caused a court to convict me, I want Caiaphas forgiven. Jesus is saying, the witnesses that they brought to, to concoct a story against me, I want them forgiven. I, I, I want, I stood before Pilate and Pilate said, I found no fault in him, but yet here I am on the cross, an innocent man as the governor suggested, I want Pilate forgiven. What a mighty God we serve. He said, I want them, all those who had a part to play in my crucifixion, Father, do not hold their sin against them. Put it to my account. He says, look here, the crowd, the crowd, the crowd, the crowd that a few days ago cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. The same crowd that was transformed through devilish influences to say, crucify him. Jesus is saying, Father, forgive the crowd. They do not understand that they are a part of the great controversy. One day, if they are faithful, they will see what mortal eyes can't see today, I want them forgiven. My brothers, my sisters, I want us to know today, visiting friends, where, whatever you're, wherever you are watching from, in the time of your ignorance, God will wink at you. God will not hold it to your charge. But I want you to understand, when you come to the point where you understand that God is to be served, you better make it right with God. Do not hold it. To their account, says Jesus. But I want to say this to you, my friends. I can't close without saying this. It was not just the Romans that God was saying, forgive them. It was not just the high priest and the elite rulers of Israel that God was saying, forgive them. It was not that just the crowd that God was saying, forgive them. God was saying, forgive you. There's a guy who in 2022 would be standing in the auditorium at the West Mega Conference. He too needs your forgiveness. There, there are some persons who are watching on YouTube. They too need your forgiveness. There, there, there are some who are on Instagram and, 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 and Facebook and WCs. They too will need your forgiveness. And so my friends, the good news is Jesus, when he said, forgive them, he is talking about you. He's talking about me. Someone may say, but pastor, 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 I was not there. I, I, I had nothing to do with the crucifixion of Jesus. I want you to read Hebrews chapter 6, 4 to 6. It reminds us that once we become a part of God's family and we turn our backs on the word of God, he says we are crucifying the Savior afresh. I want you to know today, my friends, that Jesus' forgiveness covers you and it covers me also. And I want you to note, I want someone to know 
that because we have been forgiven, we too must learn how to forgive. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, forgive them their debts, even as they forgive their debtors. In Luke chapter 6, 37, it says, judge not that ye should not be judged, condemn not that ye should not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, Jesus forgave you and I so that we can also forgive others. In Ephesians chapter 4, he says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away with all malice and be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiven one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Jesus wants us to know, my brothers, my sisters, that we can't have a rich relationship with him if we live in unforgiveness. It was Nelson Mandela who said, the man who is unforgiving and live in resentment is like one who drinks poison expecting his enemy to die. I want us to understand that Jesus wants us just as he forgives us, as he forgave us, that we too must forgive each other. Brothers and sisters, God, man's forgiveness has limits, but God's forgiveness is limitless. Man's forgiveness is conditional, but God's forgiveness is unconditional. Man's forgiveness may not remove the consequences of the action, but when God saved, the song says, Jesus says to the utmost, Jesus says, when he forgives you, he wipes the slate completely clean and you stand before the master's throne as if you have never sinned. Great is the forgiveness of Almighty God. Man's forgiveness remembers. But Jesus, read, read, read the psalm, uh, Psalm 103.12, read Isaiah 43.25. When God forgives us, he says that he remembers them no more. And I say, praise God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for his amazing forgiveness. Forgiveness, listen, forgiveness, listen this, forgiveness does not change the past, but it gives you a brighter future. So Jesus did not want his people to live in perpetual sin. So he says, Father, forgive them. And so I say to you today, no matter what you have done, the words of Jesus on the cross covers you. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they have done. If you have been lying, the word of Jesus covers you. If you are a murderer the, murderer, the word of Jesus covers you. If you have been an adulterer, the words of Jesus covers you. He says, forgive them for then whether you are black or white, Asian, African, or European, God, Jesus' word on the cross covers you. Father, forgive them for they know not what they have done. You may have been 10 years, 20 years. Your entire life may have been in sin. But Jesus, Jesus, while he was on the cross, thought not about himself. And I love to echo the sentiments of the song. When he was on the cross, you and I were on his mind. Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they have done.